What's up, Fandroids? It is Chris Chavez here. Last week, I actually traveled up to San Francisco for the world-famous Google I.O., and I came back with this little guy here. It is the Sony Xperia Play. It's the world's first gaming smartphone. It actually comes with this handy little gaming pad here. Now, me personally, I haven't really heard too much buzz about the phone. I kind of just shrugged off the Xperia Play as just like, eh, it's just like a weird little little gimmick with the little D-pad here and stuff. Uh, didn't really think too much of it. But after playing with it for about a week, um, I got a lot of mentions and stuff on my Twitter and like YouTube and stuff. People uh, have been asking me to do a review on it, especially with the Verizon version coming out uh, on the 26th just around the corner. The Verizon version uh, actually has the stock Google experience, uh, meaning that there is no UI or anything. It's just like exactly what you see on the Nexus S line of phones, um, or like say the G2 or the G1, meaning there are no skins, no UIs, just Google. The version that I'm showing you guys here today uh, actually has what Sony is calling their Timescape UI. It's basically almost like a theme or a um, skin that they put on top of the stock Android stuff um, just to kind of pretty it up a little bit and um, enhance the overall user experience and maybe even add a little functionality sometimes. So while the Verizon version won't have the Timescape UI, uh, Sony is actually planning on bringing the Xperia Arc line of phones over to the US really soon. Um, and also their little tiny fun bite-sized nugget phones uh, called the Xperia Mini and Mini Pro. So this video will give you a pretty good idea of what to expect on those phones. And both phones, the one I'm reviewing here today and the Verizon one, are Android 2.3.2, which is Android Gingerbread. And Sony's actually talking about updating uh, all their Xperia Plays and Arcs up to 2.3.4 very very soon. So first I want to show off just the general hardware of the phone and then once we get through that stuff I'm going to show you guys exactly how it plays games and how it does it and why it does it because it's awesome. So sit back, grab your lady close and watch my little review on the Sony Xperia Play. Um, on the screen you have a 800 by 480 resolution um, Sony LCD display which is really really nice. Uh, four inches, which is about the same size or is the same size as say like the Samsung Vibrant or um, the Galaxy S line of phones. Uh, you have some nice physical buttons here for your standard menu and all that, which I really, really enjoy because um, if it's one thing I hate, it's accidentally pressing capacitive buttons if you're trying to hold it. And that happens to me a lot. So uh, give me some physical buttons and I will be a happy camper. On the front, we do have a front facing camera, which is actually kind of surprising. I didn't think they, uh, Sony would actually go to those efforts, but front facing camera ready. You have your volume rocker here and you have your L and R buttons here for some serious gaming. Uh, underneath the buttons you have, um, it's really hard to see, but there are these little slits and these are stereo speakers. For the camera, it's a 5 megapixel camera with an LED flash, and if you look, there's a little tiny hole up here, and that's actually a noise-canceling microphone. So, again, this isn't really a stripped-down phone in any sense. Uh, you would think that because it's meant for gaming and stuff, they probably wouldn't go the extra mile and include um, some of the other little stuff like front-facing camera and noise-canceling mic, but Sony uh, really, really wanted this to be an awesome, awesome device, and they, they just kind of went all out on it. Uh, down here you have a 3.5 uh, millimeter headphone jack, you, uh, micro USB for charging, and HDMI out. Uh, you can display the, the games you play and stuff on the big screen. It does have an LED notification. Uh, this is it right here next to the power button. And the odd thing about it is that uh, you can't really see it ever, no matter what, unless it's flipped over and facing you like at this angle. And like, oh, I have an email. Sweet. But let's just get to uh, the good stuff, and that is whew, the full D-pad um, gaming button area. <laughs> you have um, touch touchpad for some pretty cool stuff that you would normally do on your screen. You could just do down here now, which is way better because, I mean, really, you're going to have your fingers on the screen trying to shoot zombies and people in the face. It's just like, it's silly. Really, really silly. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. So let's go ahead, um, now that we've covered this, this will be the exact same hardware that you see on Verizon. Um, right now we're going to cut to 
I guess, something that'll be a little bit different, and that is the software or the UI that's on the phone. So let's go ahead and power this baby up. And the boot time does take a very, very long time. I don't know if it's because of um, the UI that's on here or whatever, but um, I'm just going to let it sit, and then we're going to fast forward through this area here. Okay, now that we're all booted up and everything, you can see here that it does have a little bit of a different look than what you're going to see on the Verizon version. Very Sony-ish. Uh, it reminds me a lot of like what's on the PS3 and stuff, but uh, slide to unlock, very much like the iPhone. Yeah. And if we jump to our settings, I'm going to go ahead and show you the um, version of Android that it's running. It is... Ta-da! Android 2.3.2. .2. So if I go ahead and flick open the gamepad, it takes you straight to the Xperia Play app, and this will show you the list of games that you have downloaded on your phone. Um, so far it comes with, it came with Bruce Lee, FIFA, Madden, and this um, Star Battalion game down here, uh, which is a 3D shooter. I recently downloaded Cordy because I thought it would be kind of cute. Asphalt 6 I downloaded, and then Age of Zombies. So um, if you click on more games, it'll show you some other games that are kind of um, what Sony is calling optimized for the Xperia Play, meaning that uh, it should just work out of the box with the D-pad and the buttons and everything. So you have Nova, which is a first-person shooter. Again, don't really like playing uh, first-person shooters on a, on a smartphone simply because getting your fingers all up in this area um, it kind of blocks you and obstructs your view and stuff. A little bit easier on tablets because you have a bigger working area. Um, but if you can't have a tablet, the best next best thing would be uh, these nice little touch pads down here at the bottom. So... Um, you can see all the games here, Need for Speed Shift. Uh, these are Most of these are available on the market, and you can download uh, Backstab. Ooh, I want that one. I've been waiting for that one for a while. And Age of Zombies by Half Brick Studios is a great one I just downloaded and paid like $4 for. Um, and you can just see that this is a huge range, big old list of apps. And uh, clicking some of these will take you straight to the market where you can download them. So you can see here in the description, now support for the NVIDIA Tegra and Xperia Play Optimized. Uh, what that pretty much means is that, again, uh, all the buttons and everything will be mapped out ahead of time and you don't have to um, try to uh, do button mapping and assign buttons for certain things and stuff. So, yeah. The way this works is kind of weird. You can get the games from the market. Um, you can use their funny little thing when you open it and it opens up a list of games that are Xperia Play uh, optimized. Um, and then also they have their own PlayStation Store where you can download games that were like old games on the PS1 and stuff. So it already comes pre-packaged with Crash Bandicoot. Uh, it kind of sucks right now, but there's no other games really available. So if I click on the PlayStation Pocket app, um, it basically opens up this, and there should be a bunch of other games. If I click all, that's all there is, recently played, and then recently added. So we should see this probably fixed up by the time uh, this launches on Verizon. Uh, hopefully they have a whole bunch of old school PS1 games, like Final Fantasy VII, anybody? The CPU on this phone is actually a single core, second generation Snapdragon, and normally I wouldn't really believe that those would be capable of outputting, you know, anything above PSP graphics, but I was sadly, sadly mistaken. Well, let's go ahead and open up the Bruce Lee app, and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to tr quickly try to jump into a game here. Now, as much as this game kind of sucks, <laughs> I will say that the graphics are pretty impressed. I was actually pretty impressed by them. Um, did not expect at all for uh, Xperia Play with a second generation Snapdragon. Whoa, there's Bruce Lee. Look at that fool. I can tell just by looking at it, he has a bunch of polygons like on his fingers and stuff. And uh, the characters have bump mapping and like normal mapping and all that stuff to make them look really snazzy. But, um, oh, come on, get some of this. I invented Kung Fu. Oh, oh, backbreaker. So yeah, I mean, this is running at a very smooth, um, I would say if it's not 60 frames, it's pretty darn close to it. Maybe like 35 frames a second. Or, no, I'm going to go ahead and say like maybe 50. 50 frames a second. In case you didn't know this about me, I have special eyes. But again, graphics are awesome. Totally surprising from a single core processor. I, I just I can't emphasize that enough. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. And when you do exit a game to make a phone call or send a text message or something, it keeps it running in the background or open in the background, and you can continue it at any time. Um, this way you can jump back into the game and continue exactly where you left off. And you can see here I'm still kicking butt, apparently. 
Um, and then if you want to basically stop playing the game altogether, you just click menu, it brings up a little thing, and then you would go to the bottom and click quit. And that will completely quit the game and it won't be in the background and it won't be ongoing notification. Okay, that was a game that was made specifically for or tailored to the Xperia Play. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how Crash Bandicoot or like a PS1 game would play on the Xperia Play. Now there's a ton of um, emulators that are on the market and stuff that you can download for your droid phone uh, that let you play PlayStation games and stuff. Uh, it's taking me back. It's taking me way back. Um, but most of them don't really play that well. The sound is, is sometimes choppy on them, and you have to do all kinds of crazy stuff just to get it working and working well. Uh, definitely not user-friendly for people that really don't know anything about emulators or anything, but this is completely different. This is awesome. It's like it's built into the phone and everything, and it, it runs very, very well. So if I click the menu, you can see here you have your media volume, and you can change that accordingly. Uh, controller settings, and you can assign certain buttons and stuff if, uh, you know, you feel like you need to assign a controller, and then you can go into analog mode, which will let you use these down here. Uh, the manual will show you, I think it brings you to the website, I know it brings you here, and then it shows you the manual for the game, so if you need the instructions, Crash Bandicoot, uh, pretty awesome, pretty, 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 pretty darn awesome. And then you have screen mode. You can choose from normal mode, which will give you black bars on the side, seeing how the original PlayStation didn't have, uh, wasn't widescreen. So, um, or you could also do zoom, which will zoom in and kind of cut off the sides a little bit. And then full screen will kind of squish everything down and stretch it out in order to fit the phone perfectly. I'm going to go with normal mode because it's kind of the native default resolution. And I'm just going to show you guys exactly how Crash Bandicoot um, old school PS1 game plays on the Xperia Play. Oh, snap. All right, let's do this. Oh. Again, trying to do this on anything but a D-pad, um, it would almost be impossible. With an emulator, you would have a D-pad up here on the screen, and you'd be pressing the buttons right here, and you're just, it's just, it's, it's, it's really silly. Um, I'm a pretty big gamer, and I don't even mess with that sort of stuff. Uh, just seeing how it's just so impossible, and I just really, really wish they would make a phone with a D-pad, and I think Sony has heard heard the prayers straight from the gaming gods, I'm telling you. Okay, so enough of Crash Bandicoot, let's get out of here. Let's show you guys Age of Zombies. Now this is just a normal Android game, or a game that can be pretty much played on a lot of other phones and stuff, but um, I think it actually might be exclusive just to this Xperia Play. Um, I tried looking for it on my Evo and I couldn't find it. I uh, couldn't find it on my tablet either. Go ahead and start this party. All right, let's do this. Now, normally this game you would play, you know, using up here with the uh, the directional thing, and then trying to shoot and throw bombs and do stuff right here while there's all these zombies running around getting getting buck nasty. You can use the D-pad to move around and use these to kind of shoot. It's very much like um, what was that game called? Smash TV. Um, or you can just use the analogs here and blast these guys to smithereens. One thing I will tell you right now is um, the responsiveness on these analog, the analog touchpad down here is just um, unlike anything I've ever felt. Uh, it just feels a lot better than using the screen here because it's kind of textured differently and it's just so much so much easier. Um, super sensitive and all around pretty amazing so uh, I'm just totally totally loving it. It's definitely definitely opens up a whole new um, world as far as gaming on your phone goes uh nothing can really match this and if there is some type of uh, games out there that allow for like competitive online play or you'll just definitely have the upper hand if you have these little touchpads here and whew, loving it really 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 loving it uh this phone will be hitting verizon by the end of this month on the 26th uh you can expect the xperia play app here and playstation pocket for downloading ps1 games uh everything else will just be like standard flat kind of boring stock Android 2.3.2 but Sony is definitely trying to up their street cred as far as Android goes so uh, you can look forward to um, extremely speedy updates apparently they're already going to roll out the Android 2.3.2 update 
and um, that's definitely saying a lot from a manufacturer. HTC and some of the others like Motorola and stuff, they're still releasing phones with Android 2.2 and they kind of seem like they're dragging their feet as far as updates go. Uh, Sony is definitely trying to change the game as far as that's concerned and uh, with unlocked bootloaders, they're making all their phones super easy to hack and they're actually including um, links on their website to show you as a developer or as a um, hacker slash Android modder um, exactly how to unlock their bootloader and get everything running with that. So um, awesome, Sony. I really can't say enough about it or about them. They just totally, totally surprised me. And um, I honestly, honestly love this phone. I think it's great. Okay, so that was the Sony Xperia Play. What did you guys think? I know a lot of people are getting kind of caught up in the whole um, dual core hype that's been going on these days. Um, if it doesn't have a dual core, it ain't right type of thing mentality. I was kind of thinking the same thing for a while. I really didn't think I would enjoy a phone unless unless it had a dual core. Like somehow it's just going to make the phone just that much more enjoyable. But having the whole gamepad on it and everything just kind of hit like this little uh, gamer core nerve deep inside me and I just brought out the inner gamer again and I had a lot a lot of fun with it. it definitely does open up a whole new market and it's offering something truly truly unique uh, the fact that it has a gamepad with shoulder buttons and all that um, nobody can match that I don't care if you have a quad core um, nobody can match a gaming experience like that than having a good old-fashioned physical buttons for doing some um, band damage that's how I play my games it's my game face so I guess all it comes down to now is, should I get the phone? I know tons of people have been asking me that, and um, my answer to them is, if you think you're going to enjoy this phone, then most definitely get it. I really can't say enough about it. The hardware, everything is really cool. It's playing games super well, and there's games that are coming out just for the phone, and it's just really, really awesome. So if you consider yourself any type of gamer, or you'd like to have a little more fun with your phone, definitely, definitely check this out. Thank you guys for watching my little review on it. I hope this was kind of helpful to you to make some sort of decision on whether or not to buy the phone. If you guys ever need anything, hit me up on Twitter because I'm always on there talking to everybody. And um, make sure to rate and uh, leave a comment or two if you so feel inclined. Uh, thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm <laughs>